What's going on guys? Certified Meteorologist Jonathan Kegis back with you. We're going to focus a lot on the south and southeast as we have a likely developing strong system coming our way for the weekend and then potentially moving up the southeast coast as well, bringing this very impactful weather from the deep south, southeast, and then again, maybe as far north as the northeast. A lot to iron out still as we are still about five-ish days away from this, but we are going to get into some pretty high-level dynamical meteorology if you want to come along for this ride. If you do want to stay updated on all things weather before we break down that feature there that you see over Florida, you have to hit subscribe. Please do that. If you find this content helpful, appreciate it giving it a thumbs up small task but it really does help us out a lot believe it or not please post in the comments where you're tuning in from as well would love to know where you are watching from all right we're going to start with the euro everybody loves the euro it more often than not is very very good but i'm going to show you a couple of different solutions here and then kind of the middle road this is the euro model for sunday then we're going to go to the upper levels coming up and that is where we really find the difference between the euro and gfs and what the final impacts are going to be so we have a couple areas of low pressure here at the surface we have one right there and then one kind of rolling through right through southwest florida into the miami fort lauderdale area south of orlando big big warm front draped across here from south florida to the bahamas a couple of things going to be lacking for severe weather at least one thing lacking for severe weather but we have a lot of ingredients when you're talking about the potential for a significant severe weather one of the things is and i will show you in the upper levels in a minute huge dip in the jet stream big upper low keeping our winds upstairs out of the west and especially southwest now something that we look for at the surface here especially when a warm front is involved ahead of this front winds are out of the east and southeast this maximizes wind shear so that if we get thunderstorms to grow tall enough, it takes advantage of that wind shear and they become stronger. Sometimes we get supercellular storms to develop along a warm front as well, given enough instability. And that's one of the things we are lacking. I want to show you the time there. Look towards the top of your screen underneath Euro model. It's early Sunday morning, at least the timeline from the Euro. There's timing differences too that we have to iron out. But nonetheless, right here uh that would still likely give us some severe weather even at that time just because of how much jet energy how much upper level dynamics we have and then this big forcing mechanism here to kind of overcome uh the lack of instability for the time on to the gfs model now here is where we have a little bit of difference and i'm going to point out a couple of things back here is our upper low number one rolling out of the plane so some heavy rain coming to texas oklahoma down here is our surface feature. We have a big chunk of high pressure. And then that area of low pressure that I highlighted in red is developing right along this old cold front. It blasted through. That was the cold front responsible for all of the severe weather, death, and destruction. Unfortunately, we're thinking about you guys in Tennessee that that rolled through. That's the same system that this kind of next storm is developing on as it's over kind of the warmer waters here. Mentioning warmer waters, this is also going to be non-tropical in nature. It's tied to a front we have upper level features involved as well so we're not getting a named storm out of this it could be extremely impactful though so I want to be clear about that so let me zoom this in and i'll show you the main difference we have one kind of big super low right here the warm front a little further north so places like tampa st petersburg orlando cape canaveral central florida area late saturday morning into the afternoon would be under the gun for severe weather now still since it's coming later in the morning early afternoon there may not be a lot of time with the heating of the day to generate a lot of instability that would be good news again we don't want instability in this time because that would help to fuel a severe weather threat even further but again we still have a front and i will show you in a minute we have a much more vigorous upper low with very very strong winds so if we can get some storms to grow strong they'll be able to take advantage of it and when i say if we can get there i'm not rooting for this i want to be clear about that this would be a very very ugly situation i'm talking from the storm perspective just to kind of break it down what is happening here again this is just going to be uh that would be a nasty situation you see the kind of low blow up even further there it moves up towards charleston let me get this big h out of the way that was from before and then we see it here so this would be a lot of uh onshore flow right here 
So we would likely have some coastal flooding and beach erosion from the Carolinas all the way down to Charleston. If you live in Charleston, you know how easy it is for onshore flow to flood things. So just keep that in mind as well as we kind of watch the direction of where this low eventually goes. Before we get into the upper level features, I do want to show you another scenario. This is the Canadian scenario. It's kind of right smack dab in the middle of the GFS and European and actually uh, the latest run, the 12Z run on December 12th. It's more in line with the GFS. Low pressure right there, that little donut hole. Warm front kind of draped across the Fort Lauderdale, maybe a little bit closer to the south towards Lake Okeechobee. The darker red indicates the heavy rain, but it's certainly a little further north as well. Look at the one crazy thing that this does. Look at how strong this thing gets. It kind of blows up off the southeast coast of the U.S. We get a 991 millibar low. We still have a piece of it there, and then it just really blasts the northeast with some super heavy rain, uh, cold enough for a little bit of uh, back-end snow, nothing significant, at least at this point. We don't have a ton of cold air in play. And as you will see going forward, it's going to be hard for our friends that are typically used to seeing a white Christmas to get a white Christmas this year. It's going to be blowed towards city across, uh, relative to normal anyway, across most of the United States. That's a story for another time. I want to get back to the severe weather threat, though, uh, and get you to our other weather computer. So here we go. European, this is where the main difference lies in this developing big system. So a couple of entities to point out. In the northern stream, we have this guy. We also have this guy. And then we have our developing surface low down here. Watch what happens. Okay, this is where we have the phase coming together. We have two systems becoming one right there. We still have the surface feature down here that's kind of out ahead of it. So what the Euro is doing is it's forcing it a little further south. That's why we saw the main low down there. And then it kind of pulls it up in this direction. Then we don't see the kind of three pieces come together until up here. Okay, so we have to try to pinpoint three areas, three pieces, if you will, coming together. Here's the GFS, and this is why it's much stronger than the Euro. We have a little piece here, that little red area. The darker the red, the stronger the area of spins. We have this big upper low through Texas. We saw that heavy rain on the GFS, and then we have our surface feature down here. Look what happens. Surface feature gets out ahead of it. So it's being forced a little bit further north. It's being pulled up by this upper low. Here's that other piece. They have not come together yet. So there we go. And then we see them all kind of merge together, this phase. We have this upper low right here. We have another area right there as well. And then we just have this bigger thing coming together. So those are two things that we are going to watch very, very closely over the next couple of days. Again, water temperatures are warm. That has really nothing to do with it here. This is what we call a bare clinic low, meaning that this system is going to get its energy, its strength from differences in temperature and pressure in the atmosphere. Whereas in the tropics, you're looking at what we call a barotropic low, which means that Typically, temperature and pressure are pretty uniform. It's that heat engine. It gets its strength from the warm waters. Now, the warmer waters, especially in the Northeast, help to enhance the temperature differences in the atmosphere for sure, but it's not actually that heat engine like we would see from a tropical storm or hurricane, tropical cyclone. All righty, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Again, we're keeping an eye on things for a white Christmas as well. Look for that video soon. I'm going to highlight my thoughts on who has the best opportunity to see a white Christmas. It's not looking good on a large scale, I'll tell you that much. But nonetheless, we're going to watch this system coming through over the next few days again. This is for the weekend for parts of the southeast, potentially northeast, getting into next week. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. We'll catch you next time.